to take our seats, please. We're going to start the show. Town meeting is now in session. Uh, come in from the doorway, smile in. Uh, you shall have checked in uh, at the front. Um, are there any more people waiting to enter the room? All right. Uh, so the town clerk has noted that the return of the warrant shows the warrant was duly posted and properly served. So we'll dispense with the reading of the warrant. Uh, we have a list of non-registered voters and non-residents who wish to attend this meeting. So we have uh, Lisa Mazinski from the Metacomet Land Trust, Karis North, Town Council, Dylan Lindholm, Town Planner, uh, Bill Kessler, Fire Chief, Tyler James, ABMI, uh, Jennifer O'Neill, uh, Town Amended HR Coordinator, and David Demange, the Interim Town Administrator. Um, if we hear, have no objections, oh, if we have no objections, uh, I'm going to allow them to sit. Since we now use these handy remotes, they can sit anywhere. New updated town meeting, folks. Look at that. Um, please do not vote since you don't have a remote. It's going to make that difficult if you wanted to. So, but please don't. Um, please note the emergency exits in the back of the room. Uh, if necessary, please exit the room calmly and orderly. And there's no smoking or eating in this hall. Um, if you have a cell phone, pager, two-way radio, please turn them off or put them on silent. Uh, please don't answer them, um, except, of course, police, fire, and emergency personnel. Uh, remember, town meetings are not subject to open meeting laws, and re recordings of these proceedings are not allowed without my permission. Uh, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. The flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to just introduce the various elected and appointed town officials taking uh, part in tonight's meeting. Uh, myself, my name is Tom Morali. I'm your town moderator. Sitting right here is our uh, wonderful town clerk, Ellen Agro. Over here on the right are the members of our select board, as well as our um, interim town minister, David Dimash, and our town council, Karis North. Um, over here on the left are the members of the Finance Committee. And I'm sure there are other elected and appointed officials here. If they want to identify the position, should they like to speak tonight, they are welcome to do so. Um, before we get started, I just want to remind everyone how this meeting is run. Um, all questions and statements are to be directed towards myself, the moderator. We don't allow cross-talking, um, talking to each other when you're up at, at the mic. Really, all, everything should be addressed towards my success. Um, there will only be one speaker at a time. When we get to the discussion piece of any of these articles, if you could please form lines in front of each of these microphones. Um, that way I can uh, call on you to speak. Um, and oh, if you are unable to get up to get to the microphone, please, um, we, we will get you a wireless microphone. We have those as well. Just make sure you, you signal us, and we're we'll happy to bring it over. Um, but before you begin your comments, please state your name and address. Um, please speak, face the moderator. Speak towards me, not the audience. I encourage brevity. Lengthy oratories and repetition of past commentaries are discouraged. Um, please make your comments relevant to the issue. If they're not relevant to what's being discussed, I will rule it out of order. I have a bet with the uh, with the former town moderator about how short I can keep this meeting tonight, and I intend to keep it. Uh, if, <laughs> uh, please refer to anyone else as a previous speaker. Let's uh, let's not use people's names. Uh, 
And please don't make your comments personal or they will be ruled out of order. And uh, questions of order are decided by the moderator without debate. All motions and amendments must be submitted in written form, signed and dated. Uh, any article presented in the meeting must have a positive motion presented by a proponent of the article. Um, and if you want to reconsider a, a decision that was made, you can only ask for reconsideration if you vote in favor of the article in question. Uh, and reconsideration is just that, a second thought, not a second chance. I'll rely on your honesty uh, regarding how you voted in, in terms of deciding that. Um, lastly, we have these nice, fancy little uh, remotes here. If you have not taken part in our town meeting 2.0 yet, uh, and, and we have a little test question on, the way it's going to work is I am going to say, vote open, and then you are going to be allowed to vote. Please vote on this nice test question, which is, are you attending the Santa Parade and Tree Lighting on Friday 12-1? You can vote yes or no. I wait until we have the people, the amount of votes roughly that we have uh, as people in the audience. You know your clicker's working if it lights up. Yes, all. if it lights. Right, if you see. And you should see okay. <laughs> I don't see it moving anymore, so I am going, oh, 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 oh. I'm going to close the vote. It's a test question. Uh, so then we close the vote, and oh, 47 to 42, are you attending the Santa Parade and Tree Lighting on Friday 12 tomorrow? Passes! And that, that's how that's going to work um, for each question going on. Now, for the, uh, if you do have any questions, need any assistance, or do not understand what's going on, please ask. We will try our hardest to get uh, an answer for you. <coughs> Um, I can't make the answers appear out the air though, but I can try. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to jump right into it. Uh, with article one. Uh, All right, I move that the town will vote to transfer from free cash the sum of $17,345.97 to pay bills of a prior year. These bills are as follows. Verizon, $577.36. MIIA, $7,862.31. Kidsurf Accounting, $4,200. Quest Diagnostics, $133.57. And Amoresco, $4,572.73. Dan, Amoresco is not shown on the screen. So, the last one on there is Amoresco, 4,572.73. Um, it's not on the screen, but that's how much it is in the motion. Um, discussion. There are five bills of a prior year that need to be paid for a total of $17,345.96. Uh, the Verizon amount was an incorrect journal entry that was made to another budget and then corrected. Once corrected, this left no available funds for, uh, to encumber. The MIA, MIIA is the Massachusetts Interlocal Insurance Association. Uh, the uh, premium payment submittal was missed due to um, personnel changes, outgoing uh, human resources, uh, personnel and a, um, a personnel gap. Uh, Kinsharp Accounting, the invoice was uh, sent automatically to an email that was not being monitored during um, the leave of personnel, and the automatic reply was sent to an email that wasn't monitored on the accountant's end. Um, Quest Diagnostics uh, was for a uh, for routine uh, a routine police physical. There was the invoice was, re was received after the fiscal year end for the prior year services. And Amoresco is for electrical services for street lights. 
uh, the utility billing is now going to include uh, a different different timing such that uh, 12 utility bills made in each fiscal year will be uh, paid August through July. Thank you. Do we have a finance committee recommendation? Finance committee recommends that the town approve Article 1. Okay, thank you. Do we have any further discussion? Okay. All right, I am going to open the vote.
Right, now I am closing the vote. <coughs> article passes. Thank you. Um, article 5, see if the town will vote to accept the local option of MGL chapter 44, section 54, as amended per some great sections and chapters, also known as the prudent investor rule, um, which seeks to optimize returns on trust fund monies. I move that the town vote to accept the local option of MGL Chapter 44, Section 54, as amended per Section 26 of Chapter 28 of the Acts of 2023, also known as the Prudent Investor Rule, which seeks to optimize returns on trust fund monies. Second. Thank you. Discussion? Uh, on 8-9-23, the governor signed the FY24 budget and Section 26, which provides the use of the Prudent Investor Rule for trust funds. This section enables municipal treasurers to apply the prudent investor rule to optimize returns on trust fund monies as defined in MGL Chapter 203C. This broadens the current available options for investing while still maintaining the responsibility of effectively managing safety, liquidity, and yield. Thank you. Um, do we have further discussion on this? Sir? Yes, yes, please. James Purcell, 72 Bellingham Street. What's the current aggregate balance of the town's trust funds, please? We have an answer on that. Um, we, have, we don't, we appears we do not have an answer ready for that one, so. Okay. Any other discussion? Okay, I'm going to move to a vote. Um, vote open. <coughs> All right, I'm going to close the vote. All right, article passes. Okay, Article 6, to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate and or transfer from available funds a sum of money to purchase two mobile speed limit signs or take any other action in relation thereto. I move that the town vote to transfer from free cash the sum of $8,200 to purchase two mobile speed limit signs. All right, discussion? The highway department wishes to purchase two portable mobile speed speed limit signs which can be removed and attached to any speed limit sign in town. This will be done in conjunction with the police department to aid in speed limit enforcement and compliance. These types of mobile signs have shown to increase awareness and slow traffic which in turn makes the roads safer to public, safer to travel for the public. Thank you. Um, do we have a thing time recommendation? Finance committee recommends that the town approve article six. Thank you. Further discussion? All right, I'm going to open the vote. Okay, closing vote. Thank you, article passes. Article seven, to see if the town will vote to erase an appropriate and or transfer from available funds a sum of money to purchase a new or late model used dump truck for the highway department or take any other action in relation thereto. The amendment select board recommends that the town meeting pass over article seven of the special town meeting warrant for uh, November, si November 6, 2023, NISO move. Um, do we have any further discussion? Right? Uh, oh. No, that's okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to open the vote. Vote is open. The vote to pass it over. <laughs> Motion passed over, passes not the 
article. Just for a bit. Um, okay, Article 8, deceit, or Article. Okay, it's okay. Just looking the wrong spot. See if the town will vote to raise and appropriate and or transfer from available funds a sum of money to purchase computer software um, for the highway department or to take any act, other action in relation there too. I move that the town vote to transfer from free cash the sum of $19,000 to purchase computer software for the highway department. Second. Discussion? The highway department will be purchasing work order software to increase efficiency and track road repairs. The software may be later expanded to track, to track plowing, salting, and manpower use. Thank you. Um, do we have a FinCom recommendation? Finance Committee recommends that the town approve our plate. Thank you. All right, further discussion? Okay, I'm opening the vote, seeing nobody. Any other action in relation there too? I move that the town vote to transfer from free cash the sum of twelve thousand dollars to purchase a fob-based key system for all exterior doors in the town hall. Thank you. Further discussion or discussion in general? It was recommended that the door locks on the town hall and town hall annex, the formal li former library building, be updated with the same system used at the police and fire stations. This will allow more security and limit access electronically rather than handing out and collecting physical keys to those who require access. Thank you. Um, FinCom recommendation? Finance Committee recommends that the town approve Article 9. Thank you. Um, further discussion on this? Okay, uh, not seeing anyone, I'm going to a vote. just the design phase of um, a proposed disc golf course on town and land. 
we have quite a bit of open space that we have reserved and we could use more um, recreation options. This golf is a perfect fit for our open space areas. And um, thank you for uh, do we have further discussion? Yes, sir. <coughs> Jack Hodgins, uh, 16 King Philip uh, Path, uh, Res, not in my capacity as a member of the Finance Committee, uh, but as a citizen of the town. Um, I, I rise uh, in opposition to this uh, for two reasons. One, uh, procedurally and then two substantively uh, from a procedural standpoint uh, I think a cursory review of any one of the other articles that is before you here for a special town meeting uh, appear to me to barely have some nexus to some level of press some level of urgency paying of past bills and the like uh, an effort to for example secure the uh, facilities in town and the like. Uh, so it would be my suggestion that this get pushed to the annual town meeting on a procedural basis for that reason. Second, substantively, uh, I believe that it would uh, better be suited for discussion there to figure out what is the all in on this. You know, a $10,000 expenditure for a study, you know, approved at a special town meeting, quite frankly, I think it's going to be difficult to undo at a um, annual town meeting if folks see it because ten thousand dollars would have been spent and i believe that you know the you know, katie bar the door at that point the horse is out the ten thousand dollars is gone and quite frankly i think that the town has got greater greater priorities and greater needs than um, a golf course so i'd have to vote now thank you we have further discussion? Yes. I have a presentation. Fell in Avenue 10 minutes ago. I forgot to say that earlier. So disc golf is um, an activity that is um, can be played by many people. Uh, it's played just like regular golf, but it's not a regular golf course. It's not clear cutting. Um, you're not you're using your natural resources to put a disc golf course out there. So you're playing in the woods or you're playing in a field. Um, anyone can play it, young and old. This is a course that's in Milford right now. It's a nine hole course, I'm proposing an 18 hole course. Um, this is Multi-use area, it's off of the bike path in Lake Louisa, so it's a hiking area, and it's also utilized as a disc golf course and um, a fishing spot on, um, on the lake. It's very well received over there. Um, we do not have an 18-hole course in the southern Blackstone Valley, um, so this would be the first of its kind, and um, we have ample space for it. So that's me. <laughs> um, that is my first birdie at Louisa Lake. But just to show that anyone, even somebody older in age, can pick it up, I just picked it up really a couple years ago. I tried it for the first time, but I um, played a lot this year. And that was my first birdie. Um, you can play with old and young alike, different skill levels. Um, most of it's free to the public. If it's on public land, it's free. If, if it's a private course, then usually they, they charge you to pay, but um, public courses do not. And the discs are relatively inexpensive. You don't need uh, special clothing. You just come as you are. Um, and basically, if you can throw a Frisbee, it's like a hike, like you're throwing a Frisbee. You get some health benefits from playing disc golf. And, it's a full body exercise, works your arms, legs, chest, back, and shoulders. You can lose weight by being out on that disc golf course because you're walking, for an 18 hole course, you're walking approximately two miles at least, depending on how good you are. Um, 
If you're outdoors, you're getting a mood and energy boost, it improves your heart health, and improves your sleep by reducing stress. Um, this is a picture of a disc golf course done on Monte Spaniard. As you can see, they just it's within the regular natural environment. They didn't clear cut trees. That is a tree that fell. That was not a tree that was cut. Um, and that's very typical. There's a lot of them that are just in the woods. The one on the Lisa Lake is an old consigli site that um, was just sitting there. They couldn't do anything with it because I think it had toxic stuff there. So, so they put it just off course. And <coughs> Next. And that's another example of using the natural environment. You can't really see it. It's a, it's a fuzzy picture, but the basket's way, way down. Um, and you would throw through that nice so, one more thing, sorry. Um, so, in order for me to um, get started, now, the reason I'm asking for the money now is disc golf designers come to the Northeast in the winter. So, they're not going to come if we don't get the money to them. May, then I have to wait another whole cycle to just get the design for them to look at our properties. We were looking at several properties, but we wouldn't even be able to start that until next winter. So the $10,000 design study um, is being asked for at special town meeting. Actually, attendance here is pretty good tonight. Um, so not much different than annual. And then, yeah, so we do have a rough estimate for 18 holes. Um, for the equipment and the design services is $24,950. And then you'll add any landscaping services on top of that. We estimate that to be another 30,000. So the whole project we estimate at 60,000. That is not a firm number, but we would come for the rest of the money in May. Assuming that they say that our land is viable for it. Okay. Do we have further discussion? Please come line up by the mics. All right, I'm going to take the gentleman on my left. Oh, can you just. Thank you. Joe Fabric, 165 North Avenue. Um, first question I have is well answered because I have no idea what this call was. Um, I, I guess. A little more information would, would be helpful. How much land, where, where are the possible locations? I think the abutters would want to know that. Um, the people who live in the area. Um, and, and I understand that the cost to be presented, but there's going to have to be town parking, maybe restrooms, all those things. No restrooms. No restroom. Town parking, maintenance of the properties. Not a lot of information, I think, to make a qualified vote on that. Yeah, absolutely. Direct response. Alan Agro, Tim Vincent. So the, um, the maintenance on a disc golf course is minimal, and typically you would ask for volunteers to come. Say there was a big storm and there were fallen branches, you people would walk the course and remove fallen branches. But the, the nice thing about disc golf is there really, once it's in, there really isn't any maintenance. You have tea, you know, tea pads, wherever you're going to stand and throw, might have to be brushed off, but the players do that. Typically, there are no bathrooms on disc golf courses. You go before you play, I guess. And um, parking, the locations we are looking at, the three locations that we are looking at, all have parking already. Um, so that's, that's one of the considerations we have. Does that answer everything? Um, sir, over on the right. Hi, I'm David Capone, 56 Blackstone Street. I just had a, a few questions about this. Um, we recently, um, the town purchased a paddock plant, and I, I'm right behind that, and I've already had loads of people uh -huh. coming into my yard, which is sort of a concern. It's, it's very private. It's Sorry, so, this isn't, this, um, talking about the paddock land, is this, how does this pertain to the article? Well, from what I understand, that's one of the um, options. I, I, this article isn't discussing, discussing any locations. It's just talking about the study. So 
I would ask that you save your comment when they actually discussing locations. I, I guess the, unless, uh, unless it has to do with the actual study itself. How many trees would be cut down? Okay, that's I think a relevant question. Um, like for just just golf in general, how many trees are we talking about getting cut down? In I, general? Can, I can give you a number, but that's what the study would. Okay, so. yes, that's what we're going to find out with the study. And then, um, what would the hours of operation be? Um, disc golf is usually dawn to dusk. All right. All right. Thank, well, thank you. you. Thank you. Kathy Schofield, uh, 135 Blackstone Street. A uh, question about um, how well attended is the uh, golf course in Milford? Yeah. I actually know this number because I talked to the gentleman recently. So they are, there's an app called UDISC and they track. So really the number I have only track this people that use the app, but the app um, is getting about 250 people a week now at that disc golf course. So with, with nine holes, that means that at any one time there might be eight people out there. It's, it, it's, it's not packed all the time. You know, we go there and we never have to wait. Um, but 250 is his average is what he's seeing. That's great. Um, I also wanted to make a comment because I heard your presentation um, at a previous meeting. Um, in the respect that this is going to attract people to come into town, I think it can be a real benefit. Um, I know we're going to lose some of our smaller, you know, um, attractions, and you know, I think local businesses can benefit from that. Expertise traffic and um, so I think you know that's certainly one of the big pluses to this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other further discussion? If not I'm gonna go to a vote. All right. Not appearing to be anyone, I'm opening up the vote now. Related thereto, limited 
um, including but not limited to the purchase price, legal, and associated acquisition costs, and be authorized the select board, conservation commission, and town officers to enter into all agreements to any and all enter into all agreements and execute any and all instruments as they may be necessary to affect the said purchase and to take all related actions necessary to appropriate to carry out this acquisition and I so move. Thank you. Do we have a FinCom recommendation on this? Finance Committee recommends that the town approve Article 11. Thank you. Um, discussion? Is there a second? Oh, do we have, did we have a second for that motion? Thank you. Um, now discussion. Thanks, Lonnie. I have some slides. Give me get up. All right. Okay, this vote would help to preserve 116 acres of the Vandersloos farm from development and preserve it in perpetuity, keeping this historic farmland an iconic North Avenue scenic view and allowing public access to this idyllic property. This purchase would require no new taxes, no override, and no debt exclusion because there are more than enough funds currently in the CPA accounts. Next slide, please. You might recognize the white farms at Maple Farm Sanctuary. The 116 acres that the town would help to preserve includes most of the farm fields, the woods behind the buildings, and a farm pond and a portion of Muddy Brook. The buildings are not included in the conservation restriction. Next slide. The town and Metacomet Land Trust would be buying the development rights or a conservation restriction. The Vandersus would still own the land but they and future owners would have to keep it as open space and or farmland and allow the public access forever. Next slide, slide please. A professional appraisal was done to determine the value of the conservation restriction. It's valued at 1.6 million. Even though the value is 1.6 million, the town would only have to contribute 225,000 towards the project. The conservation restriction value is high because the land is primed for a subdivision and the Vander Scissors would be giving up the option to sell the property for development. Next slide, please. The town will contribute $225,000. Metacomet Land Trust applied for a mass partnership grant for $175,000. Metacomet Land Trust would raise $18,150 with a total project cost of $418,150. The value of the conservation restriction is well over $1.6 million. The development value that the Vandersluices are donating is over 1.2 million. This is an extremely generous, this is extremely generous. Next slide, please. Even though the Vandersluices would own the property, the public would have access on trails that are planned in the back of the property. This would include passive recreation activities such as hiking, cross country skiing, snowshoeing, horseback riding, nature observation, and educational activities. Currently, the Vandersluices do not allow hunting on the property and this would, then there would continue to be no hunting on the property. Next slide. The red lines on this aerial map show the property boundary of the land that would be preserved, um, but not including where the buildings are located. To give you bearings, the straight left gray line on the left of the screen is North Avenue, and the straight gray line on top of the screen is Hopedale Street. The prospective trails can be seen by yellow dotted lines on the property. The property also abuts two preserved open space areas. One is a property where there's a big farm. This property is owned by the Shirley Jean Smith Agricultural and Arts Center under the control of Gary Lynn Smith. Gary said that he's agreeable to having a trail connection on his property. The blue line indicates where that trail would be. The trail will go along the stone wall and by the open hay fields to the trails on the Vanderslip's property. The pink areas are the Hopedale Conservation Land and where trails would also continue. Next slide, please. Here are some views of property. Besides the rural pastoral view of the hay fields from the road, the property in back is stunning. When I walked the property and followed a cart path down the hill, the sound of the traffic faded away. I felt like I was in Vermont. It's a peaceful, tranquil, and picturesque wildlife habitat. One exciting opportunity, with Ms. Go's school only one block away, is having educational walks for students on the property, which would dovetail perfectly with teachers at the school looking for opportunities for after education. I hope you will support this exciting opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do we have further discussion on this? If you have something to say, please line up near the microphone. 
So I think people sometimes assume that you know a lot of land is protected. Um, the, the, the cost of services that a subdivision um, puts on the town is not usually covered by the taxes. And several studies have shown that. And so um, open space is actually very affordable and it's um, a good financial decision. And especially with the community preservation fund because at least half of that money didn't come from town voters. Um, and I just wanted to mention one other thing that um, not protecting land has a real human health, environmental, and financial consequences that can be overlooked. Open space can help prevent flooding, erosion, severe impacts of extreme weather events. It cools us in the hot temperature, it keeps the air clean, it holds carbon, it filtrates runoff so that we have clean drinking water, which is really important in it because most of us have wells. And open space is, it's much cheaper to keep your water clean than have to go back and remediate and have it cleaned up. Um, numerous studies show that being in nature improves mental health, and besides all of this, it provides beauty and a rural historic legacy to our town. By preserving open space, millions of dollars in disaster cleanup and contamination remediation can be avoided. Thank you. Um, going to go with the gentleman with the right microphone. Uh, <clears throat> so Brian Fulton, Tim Mowry. Um, so we recently moved to town, uh, Mr. Moderator. I um, sort of agree with the prior gentleman saying, you know, sometimes not necessarily the size of the land, what you do with it. Having prior uh, just to climb this, this golf course makes where we are, once again, not raising trees and not, you know, sort of like melding this into a part of the land. Uh, makes me a little concerned about, uh, you know, should we conserve this land? Like, how devoted are we to actually accessing and utilizing the space as best we can? So I do agree with that point. I will say the most enticing part of this article to me is the proximity to the Visco Hill School here. So coming from Hopedale, um, our children, uh, last year they developed this Forest Friends program in their uh, preschool. I don't know if we have any preschool aged children here uh, from a meeting members, but uh, the sort of access to this open space, integrating that to the school environment, uh, having sort of this full day forest like oriented preschool uh, was probably one of the best decisions we made as parents to provide for our children. Um, and so to me, I understand percentages of land that we have between the proximity to the school district. Uh, that accessibility would be the most important part. Um, I think. Uh, again, I would say like it is like we to do this to move forward. We do have to then commit to uh, using land as best we can. Because I think you know if you don't want to, if you want to conserve the space, not raise the land. I think that we need to be creative about how we actually access that. Some of it involves school districts. Some of it involves like other sort of development efforts. But uh, that's all. Thank you. Bill Gladwin, 77 North Ave. Uh, I guess the first question is, is North Ave a scenic group? I believe it's defined as a scenic group. Um, do we, is, is it a scenic group? Or a <coughs> yes. I'd like to keep it a scenic group. I do not want to see any buildings going off of North Ave. over at uh, 45 North Ave, and I just wanted to uh, force my support for this because I am currently using uh, a property adjacent to that, which is uh, 131 North Ave, and as a, uh, currently managing the land there and sort of uh, starting up a farm operation there, and I would like to force my support, one, for, for uh, Sherry and Jim, who are in good friends with, and two, also to help us sort of uh, <coughs> that would also help out with my sort of uh, business that I have there, with increasing the uh, flow of traffic and increasing sort of like, and also just generally help out with future plans for my farms, possible expansion opportunities in the future. But not necessarily. Some, but so that, that's definitely like that's definitely my support is to also help with sort of. With, I also want to be able to have this uh, have this be kind of a 
opportunity to to have sort of like a, have like other people are saying educational opportunities and have sort of like so I feel like we could definitely use more educational opportunities for the kids, especially like especially with the uh, especially with sort of uh, nature walks and and sort of uh, possible possible future options and. Yeah, so I apologize. Okay. Not very good public speaking. No, it's fine. Well, thank you for your, thank you for your, uh, thank you for your. Year 139 and all that, and supported this very much. I don't know how Tom will not afford to do this. The money's already in the Community Preservation Fund, so it's not coming out of our taxes or anything. The money's there. It's those fields and all that got developed. Um, it runs down to Muddy Brook in that beautiful pond, and we all have wells. And we do have another problem with the polluting the waterways. Um, we don't have any horse ride. Well, <coughs> on this side of town, we don't have any horse riding trails. So that would be good for horse riding. That would be good for walking. So I don't see how we can not afford not to do this. And um, we have preserved a lot of land in town. But it was historically a rural town. And the only way to keep it looking like a rural town is to preserve what few farms we have left. So I'm in full support of this. Thank you. We're going to have these last two speakers, and then if there's no other new um, comments, I'm going to move to a vote. Justice Force, Nathan Silent Street. I believe several of uh, the articles. Yeah, please, please move to Justice Schwartz, 19 Asylum Street. I believe that several of the arguments that were used uh, in favor of this article are disingenuous in the sense that you can't say that it's a good investment if there is no return on said investment. We have no, nothing to own, there is nothing to gain from it, and the, our, the, the potential return of future savings from not having um, cleanups is, a, is an arbitrary guess that something may happen um, on top of that, I don't think that this is a, a worthwhile investment to not own the property and then to tell us that surface water is a direct correlation to well water, which they are separated by a significant distance. So I don't think that you can correlate one to the other. And it's I, I am strongly opposed to this. Thank you. Hi, I'm Barbara Meyer. I live at 103 North Avenue. and. Um, I moved to Menden 10 years ago from Milford, and I used to wake up in the morning, and right behind the barn, we would see six or seven deer, and you know, we hear coyotes at night, and we saw rabbits, and there are chipmunks, and raccoons, and foxes, and all kinds of wildlife. In the last two or three years, I hadn't seen anything. I haven't seen a deer, I haven't seen a raccoon, there's nothing. We have got to preserve this for wildlife's sake, and I think, when I used to wake up and see those deer, I thought I had died and gone to heaven. Coming from milk, you just don't get that. In other towns, it's just gorgeous here. I mean, and I think that's such a beautiful piece of property. And there is still some wildlife. Let's keep it so the kids can see it. How long is it? Well, see a deer once in a while. In the wild, you know? And that's why I, I thought it. I said, that's why people want to live in them. This is it. It's paradise here. It's safe. It's beautiful. And let's keep the wildlife. If it's a new question they haven't been posed yet, go ahead. Lanny Morgan, 14 Bars Park. So one of the previous speakers said we have Sorry, can you please move closer to the mic? People can't hear you. He's been there twice already. CPA has the money, like it was stated to uh, people ago. If that's the case, why aren't we voting to use that money to do something with the land rather than just buy it? Thank you. All right. Um, uh, we don't have anyone. We're moving to a vote. Vote is now open. And just to be clear, this. This has to pass by two thirds in order to pass because it's um, 
Yeah. Acquisition of interest in land. So we will open up for reconsideration and we'll go back to this argument. I am going to close the vote now. Motion passes. Thank you. Have a great night, everyone. This town meeting is down. Oh.